Hey guys, Sean Luntz here from Appalachian DIY, and today we're going to install EKM Metering's Omnimeter Pulse V4. The Omnimeter Pulse V4 is a monitoring solution for all of your electrical panels, whether it's a main or a sub panel. And we'll kind of get into uh, where this is best used a little bit later on in the video, but right now, we're going to go ahead and do an install. Before we get started, we're going to shut off our main breaker and check it with a multimeter to make sure we're safely working within our electrical panel. The first thing that we did is we took the enclosure that comes with EKM metering's package um, and just went ahead and mounted it up to the wall here. Uh, we just drilled four holes in the back and then just screwed it onto a backing plate really close to our electrical panel. Um, the only thing I would recommend when mounting this is make sure that you have enough space when you're opening and closing this door um, and just clearances around it because we're going to be working in here a lot with really small wires and stuff. So make sure that you mount this where you can open this door easily. The next thing that we're going to do after we have this mounted is we're going to run conduit from our electrical panel up into the bottom of our box here. So how we got into the bottom of our electrical box is we just used a auger and just augered a hole into the bottom to run our conduit. So how we're gonna run our electrical is we have half inch conduit um, with these threaded bushings on the end and nuts. We'll just uh, push those up through here and run our conduit right into our electrical panel. Now that we have our conduit connecting our enclosure into our electrical panel, we can go ahead and mount our Omnimeter. They give you two different mounting DIN rails to do this. Um, the long one is going to give you a vertical position. Um, that is helpful if you have this enclosure laying on its side. Um, the Omnimeter will still be able to be read straight up and down. Um, so. We aren't going to use that one, we are going to use the small one, and there's three different mounting options you can do in here, top, middle, and a bottom. We're going to mount it right in the middle because we need to have access to the bottom as well as the top ports on the Omnimeter. So we're just going to screw this DIN rail right into the back here. Once the DIN rail is installed, we can go ahead and install the meter. There's this nice little clip on the back and this DIN rail just fits right into here. Just mount the front, pull this little tab on the bottom and it mounts right to the DIN rail. Now that we have our meter set up, what we can go ahead and do is start installing components into our electrical panel that's actually gonna send signals to our meter. The first thing that we're gonna be doing is installing CTs or current transformers. And where these things go is right up here on our top leads coming into our panel. Um, some things to note about these CTs is that they are different sizes. We have a small one here that's around a half inch and this larger one will almost do up to an inch. I believe it's 0.98 inches. Um, so this is the larger size that I need to go with. This little one will not fit around my larger leads that I have coming into our box. Um, one important thing with that is on these CTs, there are little pads here on the CT. And when we close these, they must be in contact. So it must be fully closed. So if you guys are really close with um, fitting your uh, CTs around, uh, just go up to the next bigger size. It doesn't have to have a snug fit around, but they must be fully closed on the leads. Another thing to note is that on each one of these CTs, there is a little arrow and it must be pointed towards your load. So essentially we're gonna be putting it up here and it must be pointing down towards our electrical panel, not up back towards the meter. Uh, so what we are going to do is we're gonna place these up here. Now be careful guys because when your leads come in here, there's usually a lug or set screw here where the leads come into. Um, that's still hot. Anything after your main breaker will be shut off, but those blocks up here, those lugs are still hot, so be very careful. Uh, we have a new panel and it came with blockouts or lockouts for those lugs so we can work around here safely. 
So all we're going to do is put our CTs up on each one of these leads. We have two leads coming in with a neutral in the middle. The CTs go around the hot wires. We have line one and line two up here labeled. Um, so for each CT that you're putting up there, make sure that each CT receives a little label that you get with a sheet for each corresponding line. So I'll have CT1 here, that will go with line one, and CT2 will go with line two. And all we're gonna do is run our electrical line right down here to the bottom and just have everything sit out here. And then eventually when everything's hooked up, we'll just fish it through our conduit into our box. One more thing about these CTs guys, um, they have different closing mechanisms for each size. The small one has these little posts that you just simply squeeze in and it releases. I actually really like this um, system. It seems to close very well. You get a nice good snap um, and it holds well. Um, I really like this one, so if you can possibly uh, go with the smaller one, I definitely like this design a little bit better. The larger one has just a manual clip that you just simply lift up and uh, take it apart like that. Um, for this one, you will need to squeeze it together and push down on that tab to make it close. So we have our CT right here, and you can see here that we have our arrow. That is pointing down towards our load or our electrical panel. Um, we're just gonna slip this right over our lead coming in here and snap it into place. That's all we need. Now you'll notice that this is loose like this. That is okay. Uh, you just wanna make sure, like I said before, that you put a zip tie around this to hold the CT closed. All we're gonna do is take our wire then and just route it over here to the side and securing it and just um, coming down with it to our conduit. So we'll take our other CT for line two and make sure that that arrow is pointing down. And then we'll just go ahead and place it over here on our line two side. Then we'll run our wire over here to the side and then just run it down the opposite side of the box. The next connection we're gonna make is actually gonna do two jobs in one. The first thing is it's going to power our omnimeter. The second thing it's going to do is measure the voltage on each lead coming into our electrical panel. The way we're going to do this is we're going to attach an inline fuse to one of our breakers. Now we're using an inline fuse because remember, this is gonna be powering our meter and we want to protect it. It's simply a one amp inline fuse that we're gonna be using. So we're gonna stick this one connection right into the ports on one of our breakers. And there's two ways to make the next connection to run an additional wire into your box because these are pretty short. Uh, the first being is a simple wire nut. Just take two wires, wire nut them together, and run it into your box. It's super simple and anybody can do that. The second way, and the way I chose, is to cut the leads here really close to your fuse holder and solder them in place with your excess leads. All we did was cut it, solder it, and put a heat shrink over it to protect the wire. And that is gonna give us the nicest and cleanest look. You probably won't even notice these things once they are in place. We don't have any wire nuts or anything inside of our electrical panel. And I just think it looks a lot neater. So there's two ways to do that. Both of them will work and each one will do just fine. So what we are going to do here is we are going to tap into our line one, which is our left side. So all we're gonna do to make sure that we are on the right one, because these um, breakers do jump back and forth, you can have a breaker on this side that's actually running off of your line one. So what we need to do is we need to place one of our probes on the bar here, which is our line one side, and then the next one will go right into our breaker. All right, so we definitely know that our top breaker is on our line one side or the left side. So what we're gonna do now is test the right side. However, we don't have an open breaker on our right side like we do the left here. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna throw two more breakers in here because this very next lug that we're gonna connect into is actually on the line one side. This second lug over here is on the right. So we're gonna throw two breakers in here real quick.
Now with our two breakers in here, definitely make sure that they are turned on so we can test our continuity. There we go. So for our right side or line two, we're going to be using this fourth breaker here. There you go. So we're going to run our line one, which is our black lined fuse off of this top breaker and our red side line two will be run off of this fourth one down here. Now it's all going to be different for you guys. So make sure that you're um, checking your continuity to make sure that you're actually on the correct side. The last connection that we're going to make in our electrical panel is we're going to be using this white wire to connect to our neutral bus bar. We're going to tap into our neutral bus bar down here at the bottom to keep this nice and tucked out of the way. Now that we have all of our wires run down the side here, we're going to go ahead and fish these through our conduit over to here to our enclosure. Now make sure guys that you are labeling your lines. They make these awesome little stickers. That way there's no guessing um, when you get these things actually fished through. To get our lines fished into our enclosure, all I'm using for a fish line is an old extension cord. It's soft enough to get around our 90 degree turns, but stiff enough yet to push past them. So we have it rigged up here. We just have them electrical taped together. So we'll just pull these slowly through our conduit. All right, one quick thing guys, and that is the position where these wires go in. These two ports right here are the way all of these ports are going to look. They are actually in the closed position when they're all fully up. Make sure that you are loosening these ports instead of tightening them. They're all going to look like these two ports. They need to look like these. This is where we're going to be putting our ports in. These are actually in the down position or open. So this is the way you want to look. So make sure that you're going left and loosening these ports and not tightening them. The length of exposed wire only needs to be about an eighth to a quarter inch in length to be able to securely fit into the port. All right, real quick guys, I'm gonna show you where I wired everything up in the Omnimeter. Um, it's a little tight to get the camera and both my hands in here to tighten everything down, so I'll just go ahead and show you. So our CT, which is off of line one or lead one, comes up right here to our first spot. This is CT1. The number one port is going to get the black line and the second port is going to get the white line. Our second CT or our lead two is going to come up here to our second CT. Port three is going to get the black line and port four is going to get the white line. Now there is also another spot up here for a third CT for three phase CTs. We only have two, so we're going to use CT1 and 2. Moving over here, now these are our voltage metering spots. So we have four ports here. Number seven is right here. That is going to get our black line. That was our voltage metering on the left side, or lead one. And then our line two, or lead two, is going to get eight. This port right here. And that's going to get the red line on the right side of our panel. And then over here is our neutral in port 10. All right, guys, we are completely wired up from our electrical panel into our omnimeter. The last thing that we can do is go ahead and power it up. Now that the Omnimeter is powered up, what it's going to do is it's going to start reading all of the information that it's getting from our electrical panel. And it's going to display everything right up here on the LCD screen. It has 42 values that it's going to continually cycle through. So what we can do is we can just stop right here if this is all the further you want to go. But 
Um, this system is capable of reading it wirelessly. You can hook an antenna up to this to be able to communicate with your computer and you can read it anywhere in the world because it's cloud-based, which is really cool. We'll be doing that in the second part of this video series. But for right now, what we're gonna do is talk a little bit about where this is best used. And in my opinion, this is great if you guys are renting anything that you have a sub panel for and say garage, um, you're running out a room or a addition to a house and you have a sub panel in there and you want to be able to bill that person for the energy that they are using. This is the perfect system. All you gotta do is tap into any sub panel that is powering that part of the house or that part of the garage or any other outbuilding that you have. This is gonna be perfect for that because it's going to be able to read just what you want in that particular area. Whatever is off of that sub panel or even a main panel, if you have it like I do, it's gonna be able to read that. So you can charge accordingly. You just don't have to set a flat rate. And if you want to be able to monitor things like in your shop, uh, when your highest consumption is to maybe better get better rates for your electricity, this is another great way to do that. This has so many features on it, I won't even get into them right now, um, but there's so many things that this meter will be able to tell you. So it's a good all-around meter for any kind of renting, subletting, anything like that. This is really going to be a shining star to be able to allow you to do that. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Make sure you guys pay attention to part two where we get this thing hooked up wirelessly to be able to communicate with our computer. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, make sure you hit that like button and head over to Appalachian DIY for more videos. Thanks again, guys, and I hope to see you next time.